Welcome back everyone, this is Fento here again with another video and today we're going to react to the video uh, made by Chase Kip uh, is Final Fantasy 7 on uh, explaining in 23 minutes I, I watched this video like two years ago when he came out with the, the first time it's awesome if, if you don't have much knowledge about Final Fantasy 7 before you want to if you're in the hype to play Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth and you're going to play the Final Fantasy 7 Remake uh, and the DLC Intermission uh, but you didn't play none of them, but you, you're going to. This video explains a lot about the story, but I'm gonna give you some spoilers for the end of the game, but we don't know if you're gonna change or not on the remix version. So, but this is the uh, uh, Final Fantasy VII explained in 23 minutes. So I hope you guys enjoy. All the credit is for Chase Keep. I'm gonna leave his uh, channel here in the description below. So make sure you check it out his channel. We have a, diff a bunch of different games like Pokemon, Zelda, uh, explaining stories in a funny way and uh, with amazing art as always so let's get started okay, so it all takes place on a planet called the planet with an ancient race of people called the ancients who were like magical hippies that could communicate with the planets the planet is like a gusher it's got that hard outside but it's liquidy on the inside and that liquidy stuff is called the life stream which is the essence of the planet containing all the souls of everyone who's passed and can be controlled by the ancients as a source of magic when an ancient would pass on to the afterlife they would call it returning to the promised land which ends up being really important later on when it gets mistaken for an actual real life place instead of just the afterlife well one day a meteor crashed into the planets and the ancients investigated the crater site only to find a naked alien lady they called Genova who infected the ancients with toxic space diseases wiping out the majority of their population the few remaining ancients managed to seal the creature away with their magical powers. Then, thousands of years passed and the ancients faded into history, thought to be long extinct. But their descendants, the humans, flourished. And humans did what humans do best and drained the planet of all of its natural resources. A corporation called Shinra began building big old reactors all across the planet, which were used to suck out the life stream and convert it to a source of energy they called Mako. Using the power of Mako, civilization quickly advanced, and also got a whole lot more polluted and green. On the bright side, they were also able to condense Mako into something they called Materia, which lets the wielder use a variety of magic, like shoot fire or summon Bahamut. Well, Shinra realized that eventually the planet was going to run out of Mako, and so one intern was like, okay, I heard from my friend who heard from his uncle that there was once an ancient race of people called the Sentra. Side note, the Sentra is just another name for the ancients. Who could control the life stream and knew the way to a promised land of eternal Mako. So Shinra searched across the planet and eventually found the crater site of Genova and were like, well, I don't know what this is, but you can't prove that it isn't a Sentra. So they took her back to their lab to begin their experiments, which involved injecting Genova's cells into regular humans combined with a whole bunch of Mako in order to create a human Sentra hybrid that could hopefully lead them to the promised land. Their plan was obviously unsuccessful because Genova wasn't a Sentra, but it did manage to mutate the test subjects into super soldiers. They named Soldier. But like in all caps. SOLDIER! The Shinra scientists also had a team of elite bodyguards they called the Turks. One of the Turks, Vincent, was in love with a scientist named Lucretia, but Lucretia blamed herself for the death of Vincent's father, so she started a relationship with Butt Ugly Hojo, and the two had a child named Sephiroth who, father of the year Hojo, injected with some of Genova's cells, making him into a super powerful baby. Vincent confronted Hojo about his baby experiments, but got shot, and then also experimented on. 
Meanwhile, thanks to Genova's cells, Sephiroth grew up to be the strongest warrior of Soldier, who was pivotal in winning the war against Wutai. However, Hojo never told him about his origins, only that his mother was named Genova. Why did Hojo tell him this? Cause he's Hojo, dude. He's crazy. After witnessing all the screwed up he's stuff crazy. Shinra was doing, one scientist named Gast left to go research the Sentra on his own. He ends up meeting the actual last Sentra named Ifalna, and the two fell in love and had a child named Aerith. 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 But they're eventually tracked down by Shinra, and Hojo shoots Gast and takes Ilfana and Aerith back to Shinra's lab. While in captivity, Ilfana gave Aerith the materia for Holy, the strongest white magic in existence. But because she's a kid, she just puts it in her hair and forgets about it. Eventually, the two manage to break out of Shinra's lab, but Ifalna was fatally injured in the process and died in the slums of Midgar. Aerith is taken in by a local resident, and years later, as a teenager, starts selling flowers in Midgar. It's here that she meets a member of Soldier named Zack, and the two kinda had a thing. But unfortunately, nothing good ever lasts for our boy Zack. Meanwhile, in a town called Nibelheim, <laughs> a boy named Cloud wants to be cool like his hero Sephiroth to impress a girl he likes named Tifa. So he leaves town to join Soldier, but failed the exam, and became a generic infantry man instead. At this point, all of the Genova research was moved to Nibelheim because... because... plot. Cloud, Zack, and Sephiroth are then sent on an unrelated mission to Nibelheim, where Sephiroth ends up finding the test tube containing his supposed mother Genova, and after reading some of Gast's research at Nibelheim Mansion, realizes that his mother was actually a naked alien lady who wanted to destroy the planet. He then goes crazy and kills most of the residents of Nibelheim. On his way to pick up his mother's body, he's stopped by Zack and Tifa, who get stabbed. Cloud arrives on the scene, and in a fit of rage, also gets stabbed. But somehow manages to lift Sephiroth up and toss him into the life stream below. Why didn't Sephiroth just let go of his katana? I don't know, man. It's cool, okay? Just stop asking questions. Good! Sephiroth swims through the life stream for a while, growing even stronger, and begins to rebuild his body inside a cocoon at the northern crater. Meanwhile, Tifa gets rescued by her martial arts instructor, who's like, yeah, I'm not dealing with all that. And so Cloud and Zack are left behind and later found by Hojo, who takes them to the basement of Nibelheim Mansion to be experimented on and injected with Genova's cells with the plan of creating a clone of Sephiroth because that just worked so well with the original Sephiroth. Nibelheim is repopulated with Shinra's employees to hide the facts of what really happened, and to watch over all the other failed Sephiroth clones, who were sorta just mindless vegetables shuffling around Nibelheim. Meanwhile, a Mako reactor explodes in Coral Town, and Shinra reasonably burns the whole place to the ground in order to cover things up. Two locals, Barrett and worked. Dine, try to stop Shinra, but get their arms shot off. Yeah, like, literally shot off. But they later have them replaced with super cool gun arms, so honestly, not that bad of a trade. Dine becomes yet another Final That's Fantasy true. VII unstable edgelord, so Barrett takes his daughter Marlene to Midgar, where he starts a Shinra rebel group called Avalanche. Meanwhile, meanwhile, obligatory Final Fantasy character named Sid is an aspiring astronaut. However, right as he's about to take off into space, his assistant is like, Wait, we haven't decombobulated the defibrators. And so the launch is cancelled. Shinra cuts funding to his space program, takes his aircraft, and he becomes a cynical and depressed chain smoker. Meanwhile, 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 Yuffie wants to restore power to her hometown Wutai, so she sets out to steal as much materia as possible. Meanwhile, 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 Red 13 is a cat who gets captured by Shinra, I guess to also become a Sephiroth clone, but like, in cat form? I, I don't know.
Okay, back to our spiky-haired boys. Zack eventually regains consciousness and breaks himself and a slightly comatose cloud out of Shinra's lab, giving him some of that soldier drip as a disguise. But the two are chased down by Shinra, and Zack is fatally injured in battle. Cloud manages to wake up from his untimely nap, and Zack hands him the Buster Sword, before succumbing to his injuries. Cloud then makes his way to Midgar, where he's found by Tifa, who has recently opened a bar where she's hiding out all the members of Avalanche. Because of all the experiments and trauma he endured, Cloud has essentially formed a fanfiction inside of his head where he was actually soldier first class and Tifa was totally into him. <laughs> Tifa notices that Cloud's a little unhinged and wants to keep an eye on him, so she convinces him to work as a mercenary for Avalanche. Hey look, we're finally at the start of the game. It only took like half of the video. Avalanche succeeds in their mission of blowing up one of Shinra's reactors, but Cloud gets separated from the rest of the team, and ends up meeting Aerith, who, as the last Sentra, is now being chased down by the Turks. In order to stop Avalanche, Shinra's president makes the totally sensible decision of dropping an entire plate of Midgar on top of the slums, killing a bunch of characters that weren't really important enough to mention. Unless you're playing the remake, in that case they've had 60 plus hours of development. Yeah. Aerith gets captured during the madness and is taken to Shinra's lab, where Hojo tries to get her to reproduce with a cat. Because he's Hojo, dude! He's crazy! Cloud and the crew break the two out and reach the top of Shinra HQ, only to find out that President Shinra has died of natural causes. And by natural causes, I mean Sephiroth's comically long sword. But it's not actually Sephiroth <laughs> who killed him because he's still relaxing in his crystal cave. But he's now so powerful that he has the ability to control anyone who has Genova's cells implanted inside of them. Even Genova itself, who he shapeshifted into his own form and is now using as his main body. He also has control over all of the failed Sephiroth clones, which includes Cloud to an extent, who he's using as his puppets to go search the planet for the ultimate materia known as Meteor in order to enact his evil scheme. So the party leaves Midgar to put a stop to Sephiroth's stabbing spree. In the next town, Cloud gives the party a quick rundown of his past with Sephiroth. But, like, the super cool version where he's actually Zack and in Soldier. But Tifa points out all the plot holes in his fanfiction, so it's deemed non-canon. Following Sephiroth's <laughs> trail, the party stows away on a Shinra cargo ship, where Sephiroth shows up and Cloud's like, Remember me? And Sephiroth's like, No, no, not really. Anyways, there's this party I have going on at the Northern Crater. All the Sephiroth clones are going to be there. You can come too, if you want. And then he awkwardly floats off screen. Reaching the next continent, the party must overcome a ton of trials during their search for Sephiroth. The Turks are constantly getting in their way, Barrett has to kill his old friend Dine, and the player has to get through Yuffie's dumb recruitment minigame without a walkthrough. Eventually they reach the Gold Saucer, where everyone's favorite character Kate Sith joins the party. <sighs> Listen, I know I gave Quinn a flack in the Final Fantasy IX video, but I think Kate Sith takes the cake on weird animalistic characters that I sometimes wish weren't in the game. And I don't care that the human controlling him looks like a Chad. Cloud and Tifa return to their hometown <laughs> Nibelheim, but find it completely repopulated with Shinra staff and the weird vegetable clones. Sephiroth is waiting at the basement of Nibelheim's mansion and is like, Hey, don't forget that you're invited to my party. It's, it's over on the next continent, you know, only if you have nothing better to do. And Cloud's like, what? Think fast! And he throws a materia at Cloud's face and then awkwardly floats off screen. The party also finds Vincent sleeping in a casket and he's like, oh, y'all want to kill Hojo too? All right, let's head out. But like in an edgy way. At Rocket Town, the party meets Sid and they try to convince him to hand over his broken down plane so they can continue to chase after Sephiroth. They manage to take off, but crash land in the ocean, and so, it becomes a makeshift boat. 
somehow. Now, because this game's progression makes a ton of sense, the gang naturally has to go talk to the weapons seller, who is running a thriving business at a lone building literally in the middle of nowhere. Where he tells Cloud about the Temple of the Ancients, which holds the ultimate Black Materia Meteor, but to open the temple doors, you need a completely different Materia, of which he sold to the buff man running Gold Saucer. After obtaining this Materia, Kate Sith, everyone's favorite party member, steals it and hands it off to the Turks, revealing that he was actually a spy the whole time. And before Cloud can destroy him, he also reveals that he's holding Marlene and Eris' mother captive in Midgar. Very cool. Love this character. The crew arrives later at the temple and find one of the Turks all stabbed up from his encounter with natural causes. Going inside, they find Sephiroth, who explains his plan of using the Black Materia to summon Meteor, which will wound the planet so badly that all the life stream will flow to one place in order to heal it. At that point, Sephiroth will stand in the middle and soak it all up like a sponge to become ultra powerful so he can destroy even more planets since he's crazy and thinks he's supposed to follow in his planet destroying mother's footsteps. He vanishes and the party finds the black materia, but it has some kind of futuristic Indiana Jones trap set on it, where if you try to take it, the entire temple will condense and it will kill everyone inside. Kate Sith is like, I'll stay behind and set the trap to atone for my actions. And everyone else is like, hey, alright, I like that plan. So he does, <laughs> and gets crushed. And Cloud picks up the materia. But then, the worst case scenario happens. Another Kate Sith appears. Uh, oh, and uh, Sephiroth controls Cloud into giving him the black materia. That was bad too. So, with the mission of failure, Aerith is like... All right, y'all are hopeless. I'm out of here. And leaves to go pray for the planet. Cloud and the crew follow her to the Forgotten City and arrive just in time for her to be turned into a shish kebab. A shish shocking kebab. turn of events exclusively for my grandma, who's never been on any internet forum and is also blind and deaf and dead. Sephiroth is like, hey, don't forget about the reunion. It's just past the mountains at the northern crater. You know, only if you have nothing better to do. And awkwardly floats off screen again. Cloud lays Aerith to rest in the nearby deceptively deep pool of water. Hey, what's going on here? How is Cloud standing, but Aerith is like sinking 200 feet down to the bottom? I don't understand. And the party moves forward <laughs> across a snowy weird. mountain, where Cloud copes with the death of his best friend by playing a fun snowboarding minigame. They reach the northern crater where the reunion is taking place. The party manages to defeat Sephiroth, but Cloud realizes that he's not the real Sephiroth, and that the real Sephiroth is somewhere nearby. Because he no longer trusts himself, he hands over the Black Materia to one of the party members, who stays behind <laughs> while Cloud and Tifa head in alone. Sephiroth starts mind-screwing Cloud with allusions of what really happened in Nibelheim five years ago, and how Cloud was just a filthy, casual, soldier 17th class. He also sends an illusion of Cloud back to the party, and gets one of them to run inside and hand the Materia to a mind-broken Cloud who floats up to the real Sephiroth and hands him the Black Materia, letting him summon Meteor. The ground splits open as a bunch of giant robots emerge from the planet? Yeah, so apparently the planet itself created these kaiju monsters as like a defense mechanism? I don't know, it's stupid. Cloud falls into the planet's life stream and gets a double dose of Mako poisoning. He eventually washes up in a nearby town, but is once again brain dead. The party finds him and Tifa decides to stay behind to help feed him his oatmeal. Meanwhile, the dumb kaiju monsters are like, still fumbling around not sure what to do, because they want to kill Sephiroth since he's the biggest threat to the planet, but since he has a magical barrier protecting him, they just settle for destroying whatever civilization they can find. 
which includes the town that Cloud and Tifa are staying at. Cloud once again takes a dip into the Mako pool. As the two enter this weird Evangelion instrumentality world, where Tifa can see inside Cloud's mind and searches through his scattered memories. Cloud comes to terms with being a soldier flunky, and Tifa finds out that Cloud actually does like her. He's just like an that. edgelord. Cloud is like, alright, whatever, I'm done being angsty. At least until Advent Children. And the two emerge from the livestream together. However, they're still unsure of how to stop the giant flaming rock in the sky. And so, they visit good old Bugenhagen, the wise sage from Red 13's hometown, who shows them a magical flashback of Eris' death, where he's like, Look, remember the green marble that was bouncing around in that one cutscene? That's actually the ultimate white magic materia, holy. And the whole reason she was praying at the Forgotten City was to summon holy and protect the planet. And it turns out she was actually successful. But Sephiroth is holding it back with his unexplained holy stopping powers. So <laughs> they resolve to take down Sephiroth to release holy and push back Meteor. Meanwhile, Shinra is like still fighting a kaiju monster and has built a giant Mako cannon that they shoot straight through it, managing to also break Sephiroth's magical barrier in the process. However, Hojo is still off his medication and is planning to fire it a second time, this time at Sephiroth to give him even more Mako energy because he's just that great of a father. So the party has to parachute into Midgar and kill Hojo once and for all. A week remains until Meteor will crash into the planet, and everyone in the party leaves to go spend some time with their loved ones, except Cloud and Tifa, who have a romantic night of lovemaking on the cold, hard Midgar soil. The rest of the party returns the next day, prepared to fight Sephiroth for the fate of the planet. Together, they descend to the bottom of the northern crater, and find Sephiroth at the planet's core, holding back Holy. They engage him in battle, with Sephiroth taking his ultimate form, Safer Sephiroth. Uh, really? Safer Sephiroth? Is that actually the name for it? They destroy his mortal body, but his <laughs> spirit still exists inside the life stream. And so, Cloud meets him on the astral plane for a good old 1v1, where he obliterates Sephiroth once and for all until Advent Children. With Sephiroth gone, Holy is released <laughs> as all the life stream on the planet converges to push back Meteor, saving the planet. Hojo turns green. I don't know why I had that in my script like it was an important plot point. I mean, I guess he does turn green. Now I know what you're thinking. Chase, this is all gonna get retconned in the remakes anyways, so what's the point? Well, not all of it. The biggest change is that a fan favorite character is still alive. That's right, Wedge. Wedge is back, baby. And Biggs, too. I can't That's wait so to see true. how this change will affect the overall plot in the next Final Fantasy Remake episode in the year 2027. Uh, okay, okay. And Zack is alive, too. Turns out that he survived his fight against the Shinra troops in this timeline, or maybe in a parallel timeline that's running alongside the main timeline? I don't know, it's kinda unclear right now. The Sephiroths we see in this game are also just the failed vegetable clones, instead of a shape-shifted Genova, with Sephiroth using his illusionary magic to make them look like Sephiroth, so that he can bully Cloud. In fact, a lot of the weird, confusing parts of the game can be explained by Sephiroth's illusionary magic, like the entire final battle. Remember that he could do the same thing in the original game, so I'm just gonna chalk it up to that. Alright, class is over, everyone. If you enjoyed the video and would like to support the channel, then subscribe and leave a like. If there's a game or a series that you'd like to see me cover in the future, then leave a comment telling me what it is and I'll try to get to it when I can. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Okay, so... It all takes place on a planet...
and that was the final fantasy 7 in 23 minutes made by chase kip um like he says like if you guys enjoyed his, uh, his content make sure you go to his channel gonna leave it in the description below and subscribe drop a like and if you have suggestions for other games you really like maybe drop in the comments to see if he can work on a video like that because all his content is like is amazing i love the art i love the 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 narration of the stories he makes so he's like top tier so i really like it so um if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to drop a like subscribe here in the channel um i'll be bringing like content for final fantasy 7 rebirth uh we also gonna be playing the final fantasy 7 reunion final fantasy 7 remake and intermission in that sequence uh in the month of february so we can get ready for the final fantasy 7 rebirth is i think we are around like three months less than three months away I'm hyped for that. I'm gonna take a vacation, like 10 days vacation just to play uh, Rebirth. Um, yep, yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoy and uh, make sure to subscribe, drop a like, and make sure you go subscribe to Chase Kip channel and drop a like in his, this video too. Uh